home and make it much less stressful, then my Charlie doesn't like a car ride, neither one of them like going to the vet, so it's all stressful and they shake and shiver. And, and when she comes, she sits on the floor and she gets out her Stop. treats and it's just like a great experience for them. They love when she comes. Except for when she turns so nails, then they're not so good. Yeah, no. They don't like it. No. So, um, I like to Pet Honor Society is about honoring our pets throughout life and beyond, and this educational workshop is the throughout life so that we can be better pet parents and help our little kiddos live longer, happier, healthier lives. And then the beyond part is um, I can help walk you through your end of your pet's end of life journey with you and your pets, instruct you on what options are available to you. I offer grief support, I do memorial services. I did one in December as our pet parents groups. That's on my Facebook page if you ever want to take a look at that or know anybody that would like to. And then I have a bunch of either pet lover or pet memorial items anywhere from glass cremation art, which takes a little bit of their ashes and incorporates it into a custom blown piece of glass. The 3D laser crystals, which takes your favorite photo and raise it inside a crystal, which is really cool. And just other stuff that's over there. If you want to take a look after we're done, feel free to come on up and check it all out. In the meantime, tonight's topic is on elderly pet health, health issues. And none of us like to see our little kiddos grow old, but inevitably they all do. And so... They don't listen. Yeah, <laughs> they don't listen. They're not cooperative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we are here Great. tonight to learn about what some of those issues are and then how to help our pets move through those with ease, hopefully, and gracefully, In the best way and less stress on us as they're doing so. I know my pets cause me a lot of stress <laughs> with their issues. Nobody likes it when they don't feel good. They're little kids. Mm -hmm. So this is Dr. Kelly Rohn with Hidden Springs Veterinary Care, and she is we're gonna have a wealth of information for us tonight. I'm gonna to pass this around. If you did not sign up, if you would please just put your name and your email address so that we can contact you about future events or touch base with you to follow up with tonight, that would be great. And in the meantime, I'm just going to pass this over to Dr. Kelly. Okay. Just check it with her. Yeah. <laughs> and Julie is watching also, my mother. Oh, hi Julie. Who you also know well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna ask you, how are you doing? Um, so, First off, is, is that I know that you all have your older pets, but what what things most concern you about them? I'll start with Jenny because I know you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well you know right now it's yeah. getting him moving, moving. and right. his mobility. Right. right now. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and what's your name? Candace. Candace. So, how about you? Um, I've been going through the gauntlet with it ourselves. So, <laughs> so, so you, you think you're, there's no one specific thing that No, not really, just yeah. kind of, you know, I mean, my cat just has nail trims because he, they were embedded in his paws. So I was like, oh, because that happens to old cats. They stop, they stop right, scratching. Right, right, right. You know, so. so I just know. Kind of, the random crazy things that can happen when they get old. Random crazy <laughs> things that can happen when they go, get old. That's true. Do you, do you have any older ones? I don't at the moment. Okay, so we'll just... Last of all. That was bad. Oh. How about the two of you? Well, I have a cat that's about 11, but she okay. doesn't act like it at all. So okay. I keep forgetting that she's a senior cat. Right, um, yeah. okay. But yeah, but no, it, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. I've got three. They're all at least 10 years old. And okay. But we're... So kind of a variety. So we're kind of, yeah. So, and I, I kind of like that. So, um, an interesting, if I can, here we go. Go forward. Um, so. Just hit the arrow key. Oh, you just hit move? the arrow key. Oh, that'd be way easier. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was compare them to us. Cause I, I think that we forget, um, that yeah, they're they're eleven, but they're eleven means quite a bit quite a bit older than than what we think. Um, so I'm going to start with cats because they're a lot easier <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of kind of doing a comparison, and you'll see why in a second. But you know, our our eleven year old, they're about sixty. So that's and you know, so then we, when we get into the fourteen year old realm, they're they're seventy two. So you know, each year as they progress is a fairly large time frame and so 
you know, when we're when we're wanting to check blood work or when you're wanting to assess them on a on a narrower and shorter time frame, it's only because they they age so much quicker as as they go. Um, I just thought it was funny that their names are as they went through. <laughs> so anyway. that way you can miss them more. <laughs> <laughs> so then I get to dogs. <laughs> So I am not going to age this guy the same way I'm going to age this guy. Um, and so that's when it gets a little complicated. Um, so our, our dogs that have um, our lower weights um, are going to age at a much slower rate um, than our, than our um, giant breed dogs. So, you know, the 10 year old um, for a under 20 pounder is, is 56, okay. But then an over 90 is, an, is 78. And so what that means for me is, is that if I have a great Dane, once they're hitting five and six, that's, that's, that's starting to, to get to be in, in that senior realm in terms of that being around 50. Um, but that also means for our, young, for our, you know, kind of especially our, our poodles, or, you know, little poodle guys, you know, they can, they can, live, they can live much, much longer. So, um, which comes into some interesting mobility things um, as well. So, as they age, I, I just go, what, what do we watch for? What are those big things that are kind of on my radar that, that, we're, that, we, that I'm really kind of honing in as to, is there something going on? Um, so, any change in appetite or drinking, um, weight loss or weight gain, um, any house training accidents, asking more to go out at night, any of those types of things. Um, persistent cough, confusion and disorientation. <laughs> um, any new lumps and bumps, bad breath or bleeding gums, diarrhea or vomiting, change in sleep behavior, and difficulty rising, walking, and climbing stairs. So there are just 10 things, and I know it seems like a lot, and I know it seems like they're obvious, um, but but the reason why is, is that, um, and I put these diseases into really big categories just because they, of the way they fit, um, but our elderly dogs tend to get arthritis or some spinal issues, vision and hearing loss, anything like endocrine diseases like our kidneys, liver, diabetes, and thyroid disease, cancer, dementia, which I kind of put into that, and heart disease. Um, so I wanted to link those signs that I went to these diseases. So arthritis. Well, I can have a change in appetite and drinking if I'm painful. I can have weight loss or weight gain if I don't want to go eat. Um, Loss of house training and soiling, that's, that's something that people don't think about too much, um, but if they can't posture to pee or go to the bathroom, especially pooping, because they have to actually make this big C with their, with their back, that's, that's, you know, um, I get a lot of, they're walking and they're pooping. Well, it's because they're ouchy and they're painful as to why they don't want to want to bend their back. Um, not the, these were supposed to be lines and crossbows, but they weren't, so those are not. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> change in sleep behavior can also be as well, um, just because they're, they're painful and they're kind of moving around. Um, difficulty rising and walking and climbing stairs. So, wow, big surprise. A lot of the same things for vision and hearing loss. Again, wow, a lot of the same things for <laughs> endocrine diseases. <laughs> wow, everything for cancer, all of it. But weight loss, weight gain, house strength, maybe not as much weight gain, but those persistent costs, confusion, everything. So that's why I picked these 10 in particular to look for. And any one, and maybe, and any one of those, to me, in an older patient, would be a reason to be able to go. Um, so, <laughs> for a gross picture, because there's one big thing that doesn't just go with, um, that doesn't just go with our elderly patients, and that's teeth. Um, 
But I think it's really important for us to talk about teeth and dental health in our on our, in our in our older patients because <clears throat> some I, I I just had one recently where this dog had a ton of neck pain and it was just kind of holding its head like this and it was scheduled for a dental and had the dental was about a couple weeks out I saw it for for a pain a second pain evaluation and the pain up here closest to the dog's head is gone now the pain that is here was still was still there but I'm curious as to see is if this pain in their neck I think because he was just like my mouth hurts I just don't want to move or he's guarding his mouth so much that he just didn't want to move his neck around. So it was, it'll be interesting to see. But this, this, I, this is ouch. This is a lot of bacteria. There's a lot of systemic effects that happen with that. Now these are very bad and these are very poor, but even with some just general mouth disease, you can get a lot of a lot of these a lot of these things and I actually find a lot of dogs won't go off eating even if their mouth looks like this mm -hmm. they're still gonna eat um, but they started they start maybe start to play a little bit more they'll start to do those things um, that dog probably had full mouth obstructed if I had to if I had to guess um, all right so you're finding some of those can some of those things so now what um, well, to visit your, your friendly <laughs> neighborhood veterinarian. And we go through them. And we go through a really good history of symptoms and, and what has progressed. Because some things, sometimes they happen over such a, such a long period of time that those little individual changes over time are really going to help us know how to focus and, and how to know whether it's arthritis or neurological disease or an endocrine problem or, or whatnot. Um, you know, so, and then a really just thorough exam, including um, especially um, looking at eyes um, as well for cataracts and those types of things for those vision loss things. It's really difficult to evaluate hearing sometimes um, because a lot of times they'll, they'll still retain some high or some low, low sounds. Um, one thing that I used to do when I when I worked in a clinic was is that they'll go, oh, my dog is, is deaf, and I go, okay, well, let's try something, and I leave one door and go around the other door, and they wouldn't know, and I knock on the door and they bark. <laughs> so sometimes I do find that they're selective hearing a, a little, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so we do need to do that. Um, so then we get to like kind of the diagnostics point of it, and you know, um, as you all know, with your older patients, blood work, urine, um, poop evaluations if they're having that diarrhea, um, and slide evaluations of those lumps, so we can make sure that they're they're um, not in a cancerous realm. X-rays potentially, oop, that's an evaluation twice, um, and a blood pressure. The one thing I didn't put on there is ultrasound. I think X-rays. Um, they, if you think about a tree and its branches, and you think about a, a, um, the sun shining and seeing the shady part, that's kind of what our x-rays do. And so they overlap um, everything. So I can't see in anything. I can't see in a heart. I can't see in a liver. I can't see in the intestines per se, um, unless there's a lot of gas around them. But uh, Occasionally I'll jump from an x-ray to an ultrasound just to, to kind of get that little bit of more information um, with those. All right, so now that what, there, there, what do they, can you do about it? <laughs> so anyway, um, so assess some weight. Um, look at their environment, um, look at their activity level, and we'll talk about a lot about that, um, nutrition, supplements, and, and their hygiene. Um, okay, so, and I, I don't get a kickback from one of the pain, by the way, I just stole it off their website. <laughs> um, so anyway, it is really easy, even without a scale, 
to evaluate weight. Um, have any of you, I know you have, mm -hmm. but have any of you just kind of evaluated weight on your dogs or know or fat mm -hmm. and know how to how to do that pretty well? So I just basically feel along the rib cage and if I have to push in at all to get to their ribs, their rib or waist, if I can feel them in their light piano feet if they're too thin and if I can just generally feel it, then, then I feel like they're they're, they're a good weight. Um, I think that especially when I look at these overshot pictures, uh, we need to remember there should be a little waste there. <laughs> and if that waste has disappeared, just look at the disappeared joints, but um, they're, they're also going a little bit overweight as well. So, um, and here's the next one. Anybody struggle with weight with their dogs or struggling with, or struggling with gaining weight? Either one? <laughs> Gaining weight? So. She's been that way her whole life. Her whole life, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> and losing weight? That was poor her and I've got one that is thin and it's been big size. Big size. And dogs or cats? Cats. Cats, okay. All right. Um, let's talk about summer. Um, so, environment, actually, Oh, it did. It's loaded. <laughs> Where is it? Um, so let's talk about environment for a second. Um, so mobility is kind of mostly what what I'm focused on here with environment. So if they're tending to slip on the floor, we can put, put mats or or um, or uh, area rugs down. Um, if we're having trouble with stairs, I encourage people to to put gates gates up to prevent falling. Um, uh, ramps and they don't have to be the $150 ramps that you buy this was I stole from Pinterest and I was like oh that's awesome <laughs> so you don't need to need to do that um, elevating bowls um, just to so that they're they're not having to kind of dip down um, this is an awesome thing um, especially for you in particular <laughs> If you have one cat that's struggling with weight loss and one that's struggling with weight gain, this is a cool little thing where it actually notices their microchip and it puts their head in and then it opens them up and so only one cat can get into it. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you it's not a cheap endeavor. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but I thought, it was a, I thought it was a really neat idea that for those that have one versus the, versus the other, um, how old are the cats at home? They're all about 10. They're all about 10. I mean, they've got a lot of life left, so it might be a worthwhile investment. We have a client them. with four cats and they have four of them. So they, they? But that way they can keep, two of them have health problems, and that way they can see which one's eating, which was their big mm -hmm. thing. They wanted to make sure that like one of them didn't stop eating out of nowhere and they didn't right. notice. Yeah. yeah. How much does it cost? They're over, like, they're, they're over $100. They're yeah. over 100 I was thinking 150 I mean, that's worth a lot. Especially for ten, you know, they that's ten years old. They still got they still got a lot unless they're having some health issues right now. They need now. to get a job. They need. Yeah. To get a job. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a few like that. So that's right. um, goals. Yeah, I think both might need a job. <laughs> so you know, we don't think about cats too much for helping them out with little stairs and whatnot, but I think these ramps and whatnot, and. This I wanted to put up here, a lot of our older cats, they also still get arthritic disease. I, we used to a long time ago go, oh, cats don't get arthritis, and I, I do not understand where any <laughs> of that came from. Um, but making a low litter box so that they can get in and out a lot easier, and this is just a mat so that it's gonna catch that, and just making a really low litter box so they can get in and out a little bit easier. Um, especially for arthritic guys, um, these are actually heating and cooling beds. And the reason I bring that up is, is that um, sometimes our pets just don't like, like the heat, they would rather have the cool. Uh, so kind of just going based upon what they want and what they feel is, is really important. Um, I do like the orthopedic beds for how, how much as they are. It just offers a little bit more cushion between that and the floor, especially as they as they as they do do get get older. Um, I just how, think it's, how do those beds 
It's Unger. I like that. You know, I have no idea. I found it on Amazon. Um, <laughs> so I assume it's just pushing like some air through, like your like the like the seats in in cars mm -hmm. that they just kind of pull and push some people inside them. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um. So how about vision and hearing loss? Um, vision loss, don't be a furniture mover. Um, that's, that's like probably the biggest one. Um, use a harness so that you can help direct them a little bit better. Um, you can put a mat under their food and their water dish so they know where the transition is and where they're getting to um, so they can um, know that. You can do new commands like stop left, there's a step, that type of thing. Um, and then speak to your dog when approaching because a lot of times they can't they can see you. Um, hearing loss, um, use a vibration or a light when you, the biggest thing, and I don't know if you find this with your dog, is, is that they, they don't know when you're coming um, because they're just, they just can't hear a lick. And so if you use some vibration, they can hear you, and that's probably mm -hmm. why you're spending more time near the door when your garage is going up and down and whatnot. So, um, you can train hand signals with these guys too. Um, and there's a nose works. Mm -hmm. Do you do it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I did take a class. You did take a and class. And we hide stuff around the house now just because. <laughs> it's fun. Right. Right, right, right. 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 Uh, and, then it's, and then it's a game. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, this I thought was a good one. You can attach an IM duck to the collar so that if anybody's approaching, so that they know that when they're going, oh, hi, Fluffy, blah, 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 it's like, well, they don't hear you. Um, and just a leash is a must. All right, activity. Um, I just put this up here because I thought it was really cool. <laughs> Any of your mobility things, this is going to be a little much for them. Um, but just having stuff for them to do. Um, moving is always better than not moving. I think that there's this 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 stigma that our older pets are like, well, you know, we should just let them rest, let them rest. But that's actually not doing a great job for their joints. So giving them anything that they can do um, that will help them. Um, and I just wanted to do some kind of unique stuff. I thought this was really cool for the cat who's playing. Um, if you're overweight, can you get put food in here and make them work for his food? Yeah, work for it. You can do that pretty easy. Um, but any activity, this is what they did was is they put treats in here, and then they go in and like go in and, and do the get the treats out of there. I thought that was a joke. What is that dog doing? That's not shepherd. Crazy. The shep. Oh, this is bottles great. on a dowel, and then what he does is he put pushes on here, and there's treats in the bottom, and then they come out for the bottle. And I have, the last video that I put up on Facebook was actually with Canine Companion Consulting, and yeah. he walks you how to through how to make one of those. Yeah. So if you look at our Facebook page, there's he like detailed talks mm -hmm. through how to make them. Yeah. But I just thought that that was a really cool. Yeah, they just spin. Um, you know, a ball pit for cats. I thought that was really fun too. Now we can hand it. Will they? Oh. <laughs> oh, you were, yeah, now I got it. <laughs> That's a joke. <job. laughs> um, so I'm going to talk about nutrition uh, just a little bit, um, but I want to tell you first and foremost, just follow whatever your veterinarian is recommending um, at the time. Um, so there's all sorts of pres prescription foods that can help kidney, liver, heart, arthritis, cognitive. Um, I know I'm going to open a can of worms with the bottom one, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it. Um, so over-the-counter, good quality food, and, and absolutely APCO certified, and there's a lot of not APCOs out there, um, and that's where I get into please avoid the veg foods, which are boutique, exotic, and grain-free. There is a FDA announcement out right now that is correlating certain foods, especially in these categories, with heart disease. So the best thing that I've been doing is just recommending, make sure you go with the APCO. Um, make sure you go with APCO certified. I'm to my own clients going, you know, go with the big four. And, and that's the only thing we can do right now because the, the, the problem is so bad. 
Um, in fact, I just read this morning that the youngest dog of cause with it is five months old. Oh. So it doesn't take that long. So um, who are the big four? Uh, Victor Hills, or Science Diet, um, Purina Pro, Pro Plan, and Royal Canin. So those and are what? The, I'm sorry. Royal Canin. Oh, okay. So those are the big four. I'm not saying that the others don't have good food. It's just they're the only ones that. I mean, there was one food, and I don't, I don't want to mention it, that I, I thought was a good food, and when I went to investigate, they don't even have a nutritionist on their staff. Like, I, I mean, it's that rampant, and I, I think what has happened is everybody kind of got on the bandwagon of these, and it's the, the grain-free thing, and you know, and even in people, um, there's a lot of good marketing, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes the marketing isn't nutritionally valid. So anyway, uh, like I said, I know I'm going to open up a can of worms, but I, I needed to mention it. Um, all right, <laughs> eating too little or too much, um, what can we do? Um, they won't eat, so you can warm up their food. You can try different food types, especially for cats. Um, can dry, moist, um, and for cats, especially kibble type, they actually did a study a long time ago where the cats would actually <laughs> prefer one kibble type over another, whether it's square, rectangular, round, whatever, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, and also you can introduce meat baby food too and trying to kind of encourage them, encourage them to eat. Um, hey, they're still hungry. <laughs> for dogs, you can add uh, canned green beans. You can try a slow, slow cleaning bowl. Um, small meals frequently for cats if you have the time to do that. Um, switch to canned food for cats. Um, the dry food inherently has more carbohydrate in it, and cats are are obligatory. I'm saying that wrong. Carnivores, and so there's more protein in that canned food. Um, just by nature. And so by switching to that, it's like an Atkins diet for cats per se. And so they'll, they'll um, lose weight. The other thing I've had people do with cats that are having trouble losing weight is they'll get those little soy sauce containers and put like three kibbles in them, kind of like what you were saying that you're kind of leaving it all around the house and just leave a little bit and then move them. And so they have to go and find them like they're hunting. And so again, more mobility, more, and then they have to go hunt for their food. And um, that's another way to do it. And it just kind of slows them down. Dogs better at it though. Yeah, Dogs exactly. better at it though. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> that's, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> uh, under furniture, I guess. Well, unless you have a small dog, and then I guess they go, can go under. The cat dog. The cat dog. <laughs> um, this is just an example of the different the different kibble types of those when cats are kibble farmer. Um, supplements. Um, I'm only gonna touch on a couple, but there's a lot out there um, depending upon um, what the problem is for for your um, dog or cat. Um, fish oil, <laughs> like we should all just give them fish oil. <laughs> so uh, nerves, joints, kidneys, brain, all of that um, it helps with. Um, when I start them up, I just get a little cautious with diarrhea just because it's really, um, just really high in that fat. Um, and then I'm just gonna mention the ones that I typically use and more than natural roots foods that I use. Um, Glucose making written in MSM, they're for joints. Um, and a lot of them have turmeric and boswellia in them now, and they're just two nat natural anti-inflammatories um, that are lovely. You may have heard of um, gold paste, uh, and that's what that, what the, what kind of the turmeric is doing. Um, so no more basquin, and that's the that ones I use. Um, Sammy, um, that is a supplement for liver and brain. Uh, Ben Barron's that one and a probiotic um, help to help maintain gut health. Um, they're finding in cats actually that their gut flora is really, really important um, 
in like their breakdown of, of well it is for everybody but also cats can tend to get this what's called tridentis um, where their pancreas and, and their intestine and their um, uh, gallbladder become inflamed and they're finding that it's because of some of this gut flora that's off um, so that's that's super helpful the one other thing I'll make a comment I'll make about supplements is, is that they're not regulated by the FDA so a lot of them are very price effectiveness unfortunately associated so you know if you're getting a very cheap supplement it's probably not going to do much i'm not saying if you get the most expensive one it's going to work for you either but finding something that um is is at least middle of the road is worthwhile or if you're like oh i just want to try it and you're on one of those less expensive ones um don't count it don't, don't discount it that it's not working i would just try to try a different one and get a, one that's had some results behind it Hi, Jane. I mean, this is really obvious, um, but I think I think sometimes as as we get older, we're like, well, they did it before. Why aren't they doing it now? Um, and so, um, same reason like, I'm not doing it. Yeah, exactly. I'm not doing it now. You just do your own nails. Why? Why? Why do, you do, do I now? need to do them now? Um, so I, I really. Um, so uh, this this is, this is a question I get quite a bit. Well. They're really, they're, they're really kind of arthritic or they're having trouble standing because they have some neurological issues. Should I still groom them or get them groomed for those dogs who regularly go to the groomer? And I'm like, you know, yeah. I mean, if, I, if, if I'm not groomed, now I might have to give them a little bit more pain medicine or give them a little more support or the groomer might have to take a little bit longer, do a little bit and then, and then go back and forth. But I think that just like us, they're gonna feel better if they're if they're groomed, um, especially brushing cats. And I know that they hate it, um, but I, I we have a ritual, my cat and I, right now that you know I'm doing some work at night, and she'll sit beside me, and I have a brush sitting right there, and then I'll brush her a little bit, and then she'll get cranky with me because it hurts, and then I'll put it away, and then I'll just <laughs> then I'll go back to working, and then I'll. When she settles down, I'll do it again. And I've gotten to a point where I can keep it at bay. And I think it's really, really important. Those mats hurt. Um, they're really tight. And it's like me taking my ponytail and just leaving it in there as tight as it possibly can be for days and days. And so that's a part of, of their pain. Um, the thing we know and love, veterans. Um, so I, again, that's really important in dogs. Um, well, and cats too, but since they can track them, it's not as big of a deal. But if you leave the dog's toenails long, um, if you think about a dog and walking up a hill, what they're going to hit first is their nails. Um, if you leave, leave their nails too long, they're going to feel like they're walking uphill all the time. And it actually interferes with that where their feet are in space. Um, so not only does it hurt when they're arthritic, it also can kind of interfere with that. Um, clip them there, they're already easily. Um, diapers are potty pads for the dog, you know, they're gonna lose it sometimes. Um, clean the litter box, I, you know, you know, we should do it daily or whatnot, but I, I think as cats get older, they get really, really less tolerant of this. Um, so doing it more frequently. Um, I put bathing on there um, less or more frequently. I was just meaning if they were getting soiled, but really in Colorado, um, if you're unless we're doing it for a medical reason, once a month is plenty, or I would even say less. Um, it's too dry; they get itchy. They'll get dander. Um, so that's kind of my thought on hygiene. Um, so now I'm kind of going to get the sad spot. <laughs> um, so how, I don't, and, and I, I, I made copies of these, but I found this on a website and I know that Claire has, has one that she's um, used as well. And I, and I, as I was going through, is that one a, a app 
too, because I think there, there's is, an app there is an app with it too, but this is one I just kind of found. I, I kind of like the journeys thing. I think I got attached to that. Um, so, but what it basically is, and, and I have one if you'd like it, is, is that it, it just takes these eight things and then you score them from, from one to 10. You know, one being poor and 10 being perfect or excellent. Okay. And, it, and you go through each of these and thinking about things and you get a score at the bottom. And you know, clearly if you're an 80, well, okay, we probably aren't doing this at all, okay? Um, but if we're an eight, mm, we're, our quality of life is pretty poor. And the thing I liked about it is they gave some really good, um, just things to think about in terms of, of each of those things. So, you know, how is our mobility? That one's kind of, kind of, you know, how is it changing? Can they do the things that they really like to do? Or are they, you know, if they're throwing the ball now, is they just not, are they not going after the feather as much? Um, Al Jerkane, um, evaluating pain in, in dogs and cats is a little challenging, but I actually kind of link these two in terms of that mobility as well. So if they're not moving around as much, it could be we can't see, we can't hear, we can't be doing those things, but I bet you there's a this component to it. Um, um, uncertainty and understanding. This is why I like this because it also takes you into consideration. So, you know, is there a medical condition that you know that your pet has and how fast is that medical condition going to progress and what does that mean in terms of in terms of you and what you need to do? I recently had a client that that dog, that her dog passed away and and I called her to offer condolences and she goes, Kelly, I had no idea how much he was encompassing my life. She was, she, and, and he, she goes, I'm not sad that I did that. I just didn't know. I didn't know how much worry I had until he passed. And I think it's important to know that their quality of life, life is also forced. Um, so respiration and breathing is mucus and hygiene we talked about, eating and drinking. You as a part of kind of what I, what I talked about. So these are kind of done together. Um, and then their social ability, like how much are they interacting with you? How much are they getting up? Or is, has that changed a lot over time? Um, I had a golden retriever who, um, you know, just all of a sudden she stopped coming to the door. That's not a golden retriever. You know, I mean, she just laid there and, you know, she would wag her tail in her spots but her interaction with me was, was much less. And to be honest, I, that was what tipped me into, into choosing for her. Um, so anyway, so that's, that is that. So I, I, I know I, I ended on a sad note, but um, hopefully maybe um, these funny pictures may interest you a little bit. Great. So I, I had to show my own. So this is my um, fat, fat, or tat, Tatooine. This is Shadow. This is the one I have to brush on a regular basis. That's <laughs> just like that. This is Molly. That's Ruby. That's Sarah. And that is Buddy. So that's my animal clan. I hope I helped you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any questions or anything or anything in particular you want to ask? Games for being our new home the third Thursday of every month for our pet parents group. I want to thank Liana with Wet Noses Pet Sitting for putting us out on Facebook Live. As I said before, if you want a repeat of anything that you heard tonight, go to Wet Noses Pet Sitting's Facebook page. I shared it on my Facebook page and we'll put it on um, Springs Facebook page as well. <laughs> so you can find it anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Um, 
feel free to come up and ask any questions privately if you want. Talk to me about anything if you want. Um, next month, I forget the date in March that it is, but it's the third Thursday of the month. We are gonna have Sherry and Ginny from WAG's Pet Market and Grooming, and they are gonna come and talk to us about the different diets oh, that are sweet. available out there. And also kind of talk about some of the ingredients that are listed on the back of your bags. I know when I turn my bag over and look at the ingredients, I'm like, I know byproducts are bad, but that's kind of the only thing I know. So they're gonna explain some of the ingredients and what you wanna look for and what you don't want to have in your foods. So that'll be a little bit about that. Um, and then in April, we're gonna have Rihanna right here will be our speaker talking about how to be an A plus pet parent. So you wanna say anything about that or? Um, I'm gonna step away so I'm not super loud for the yeah. phone. Uh, I'm gonna cover a little bit about everything spamming pet care and all the like random little hints and tips that we give to people over the years, the things that people don't know or think of. So I couldn't come up with specific subjects so we're gonna span everything and then answer any questions. Cause really what we do is we're pet specialists, like general care specialists. So that's what we do. Okay. So if I have your email address, I send out an email just once a month telling you what the, usually like a week or so before the event, telling you what the event is. You can sign up through Eventbrite or you can just show up here like some of you do. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> we had somebody asking where they can find this. I will put it up on um, my website. Okay, and I know you have also similar resources. Are they up on your website? Um, they're not, but what I usually recommend to people is Lap of Love's Quality of Life Scoring Tools. So if you just go to, I think it's just lapoflove.com, lap, like sitting in your lap, of love.com, and Google Quality of Life Tools, there are a couple of different questionnaires um, that are available for you to fill out. Just one is just a calendar, putting a smile or a frown on the, on the calendar to say was it a good day or a bad day and have different members of the family do it. There's another one that has like a scoring about eating, uh, drinking, mobility issues, sleeping, their attitude, their mood, and all kinds of things like that. Um, and another, there's a, a couple different ones on there. And then I have not downloaded the app yet, but I know they do have an app if you wanna keep track of things, just so that you can kind of help figure out what what is the right time? Kind of takes the guilt off of you making that decision when you have something that you can refer to as a guide and say, oh my gosh, they're scoring really poorly, or oh yeah, we still got plenty of time, we just maybe need some pain management, or maybe need some acupuncture, or physical therapy, or all the things that Dr. Kelly helps out with. So, um, so yeah, go to lapoflove.com and check that out for quality of life scoring tools. The journeys. Any other questions? Okay, right. thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Thanks.